Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from ExitAutomation.com and welcome to another series from Exit Automation on GraphQL. And in this video series, we're going to talk about GraphQLs and understanding the basics in real time, which means we're going to use a real time application and we'll understand how GraphQL works and how GraphQL actually even being used within an organization. All right, so let's get started. So GraphQL is a query language for API and a runtime for fulfilling those queries within your existing data. So if you just think about what is this, then probably we should go back to see our classical API first and then get back to the same thing that we are seeing over here. So let's take an example of a normal client where we're gonna have a web page or a browser or it can be a mobile application or whatever it is. We used to interact with a REST API using an HTTP request, something like this. And then this API is gonna in turn gonna talk with some servers and this is how the classical system basically works, right? It can be on the cloud or it can be on any place of that matter. So we don't really have to worry about it. But to call this API from mobile or web application, we used to make a lot of API calls, something like this. You can see that, for example, if I want to perform a component details to be retrieved, then I'll be using this get component, get all component, create component. And then similarly for getting a product then I use to this get product and get product by name if I have something like get product by ID then probably I do get product by ID and then I also create a product using this create product endpoint so there will be a lot of endpoints which is what is the classical system is going to look like so in order to show you how the application is going to look like I'm actually going to show you a real-time application where I will show you how the systems are basically going to work so I'm just going to do a dotnet watch run so that it will show the application actually up and running and this is going to be an application which is built for both graphql as well as for the rest api and this is the documentation of the normal swagger api doc which is going to have all the different api calls that we use to make within an api for our product for example over here as you can see we have this uh, get component by product id uh, get component by product id components by product ID and create component, get all components, and then get product by ID, get product by name, and get product, like all the products and create a product. So if you try to do a query, something like this, you will see that you get all the products over here. And similarly, if you get a product by product by ID, for example, if you just do that, you will see that you get all the products, something like this, and you also get the components along with it. And if you want to get uh, a specific uh, component by a product ID, for example, we have a product ID over here of one and we got these two components for it. Similarly, if I want to get that over here, so I can just put this one and if I try executing it, you will get these two over here that as you can see over here, right? So basically these are different API calls that we are making to make sure that we get a particular product or get a particular component or create a particular product or a component. And you can see all the schemas are gonna be listed over here for that particular API calls that we are currently making. And you can see that this is how we have been making the HTTP based REST API call for all these days. With GraphQL, we'll have things a bit different this time. All we're gonna have is we're gonna have the same kind of client, but just that this client is gonna be called as a GraphQL client. Well, that is something what we'll be talking about in this particular series, but yes, this is what is gonna be the GraphQL client and which is gonna be talking to a GraphQL server, which is gonna do a resolve of all the schemas and the queries that you're gonna be passing in. And then it is gonna in turn talk with the data source provider, like a server or something like that. And all the requests that you're gonna be passing into this particular GraphQL server that you are seeing over here is gonna be like a query as you can see over here. That is the only thing that you are gonna be doing basically. So you're gonna be calling the endpoint called a slash GraphQL. You're gonna make a post HTTP request on this particular slash GraphQL using a query something like this so basically you will be performing a query on an api and that api is going to in turn have all the responses that you are looking for pretty much like a sql server query that you have seen like select name price components from products where product is going to be something like that so you write a sql query that's exactly what you will do here in an api world as well that's why 
GraphQL is nothing but graph query language. That is what is GraphQL. So GraphQL is a query language for an API and a runtime for fulfilling those queries with your existing data. That's what it's actually doing for us. And to talk about a bit of history on the GraphQL, GraphQL was developed internally by Facebook and then made publicly available on 2015. And it's now an open source project. And GraphQL is a language agnostic, meaning it can be used with any programming language. So if you are worried about the language, like will it support Java or C Sharp or JS, then it is going to support all the language because GraphQL is actually not a language, rather it's a specification. So it can be implemented in any language, just that it has to follow the pattern of the GraphQL schema. Well, now we have really realized that GraphQL is basically like a graph query language for an API, and it's going to have the query and the client, which is going to even call the APIs are going to call the GraphQL server using a query language. So that particular query language should have certain components and those components are something like these. It's going to have something called as field. It's going to have arguments. It's going to have alias, fragments, operation names, directives, and mutations. So these are the components within that particular query that we are going to be passing in to a GraphQL server so that the GraphQL server can resolve for us. And then it's going to return the data back to the calling client. So this is how it's actually going to work. If this particular slide doesn't even make much of sense, don't worry about it because in this series, we are going to be covering them up a lot, but I'm actually going to show you all these things bit, not everything like operation names or fragments and mutations, but a bit of these things in a real time example so that you can really relate what the GraphQL query is going to be doing for us in comparison with the Swagger documentation we just saw for the same products and the components. So we just saw that in order to get all the products, we tried out something like this and it gave us all the products over here, but you can see that it is not going to give us a specific components if I wanted to. So if I want to get all the components, then I need to write some code within my entity framework to include the components as well. So that it can give me the components like that. And if I want to get a particular product using its ID, then I need to again call another call another API, which is going to give me product, which has got an ID and it's going to include the component for that matter. And if I want to call a component, then I'm going to call the API. This is something that we all know basically, but now we're going to see exactly the same thing using the graph query for the same product itself. What I'm going to do is like, instead of the swagger index.html, I'm going to call the UI playground. And now you will see that just don't worry about this query. This is coming from my earlier tried up query and it's all coming from the cache. So this is called as the GraphQL's playground. And this GraphQL playground comes out of the box in many languages like C sharp, JavaScript and Golang, something like that. It's all something available as an tool to try out the graph query language or against the product that you have written. And the good thing about this particular GraphQL playground is that it's also going to show you the schema as well as the docs. So this is something very important because if your product is going to have a schema, this schema is going to be pretty much exactly the schema that we just saw on the Swagger documentation over here, something like this. This is exactly what is being shown over here, but just that it is also going to show you some other details like component types, product types like that. Uh, and it's going to have all the different uh, variables of that particular product. So I will try showing you instead of going into the schema, I think the documentation will be even more interesting to something that we should look for. For example, if I want to query all the products, so you can see that we have a queries of products over here. And if I select the products, it will show me that within the products query, I can try out all these variables along with components, uh, something like this. And then I can even get the component type details, something like that. And if I select any of the name, it's going to show me some scalar type representations and stuff. Don't worry about the scalar types. Those things we'll be discussing later in this series. But for now, in order to get the product, we are going to type something like query. And then we're going to open a braces over here. And then I'm going to type the product. So if I don't really know exactly how should I query, if I don't see this query, basically, 
then if you just do a control space you will see that it's going to show me that product which the products or product which is cool and then again open a praises and if you don't supply the value that you're looking for something like this or something like that it will also show you the syntax error something like this that's the cool thing about this playground which is awesome and now if i just go to the products and then if i do a control space you can see that it's going to show me the different properties that i can use within the products type or the product type so i can choose the name and if i want to get its description then i can choose that uh, description and now if i try executing it it's going to show me all the products which has got name and description in it which is cool and now if i want to uh, get its price then i can just type the price and i can run this and you will see that it just works which is cool and the most important good thing about this is within the products uh, if i want to get a specific product with its id then i can even choose the id so you need to use the id colon followed by the variable that you are passing in you can also pass the query variable but we'll be talking about query variable later later in this series but as of now let's try passing in one and if i try running it you will see that it is going to show me the product keyboard and if i uh, pass three and if i run this it is going to sh show me the product which is going to be the monitor so this is exactly what you can do over here uh, like product by id something like that this is what we are doing over here as well and you will see that i can also get all the products along with the combo of the components something like this and i can get its name and description and if I try running it, you will see that it's going to give me the whole detail. So that is the good thing about the GraphQL itself. So you can control the GraphQL to return you the amount of data that you are looking for instead of you returning all the details, even if you are not looking for. For example, over here in the get product by ID, if you execute this API, you will see that it's going to give you the component regardless of you needing it or not. That is something like an additional data that you are actually supplying to your client who is even not interested in this particular data. In that cases, you can actually just use the graph query to just pass what that you are looking for. So that way you reduce the number of data that you are really supplying to your client itself. So that is the major thing about GraphQL to make your application speed up and use much less data than with a classical HTTP REST API. So that's it guys, this is how we can actually keep querying. And again, we can keep talking about this GraphQL a lot, but we will cover even more lot details, like how to work with fragments, query variables, and aliases and schemas in much greater detail in our upcoming videos of this series. But now you have got an idea of how to work with the GraphQL, but this is what is the GraphQL query components that we'll be talking in much greater detail in our upcoming videos. And also we'll be talking about something called as schemas and types in much greater details in our upcoming videos of this section. Once again, thank you very much for watching this video and you guys have a great day.